Oh shit, what the fuck did he do that for? Oh my god! Oh my god! So, and this, I guess I that's know. what I'm saying with, with No Man's Sky. They don't have enough... I don't know. Everything looks so similar that I don't feel like there's enough going on there. Like, they need more of that. But if you're saying well, that right. they all didn't I, all do I was it meaning in a to way... Say is that, what I'm meaning to say is that the data is not necessarily representative of what the capacity of visuals potentially is. Because if they're recombining things using an algorithm, then theoretically they may not need you know a call of duty's worth of you know terabytes of data to have what would appear to be more assets you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah that's all i understand driving out um and i'm not trying to like rip on the developers or even overly rip on the game necessarily it's more so of like i just feel pretty strongly that it is a uh, it's a design error is what it is it's like the same one that minecraft has right where minecraft pointlessly has an infinite world why have that other than for kurt <laughs> the, the infiniteness of the world is useless to everybody ever especially because it's going to bog down at some point and not really be playable the farther you go i mean even compared to infinite, even moderately sized worlds be start to become like gigabytes and gigabytes in size. But there was no point to having them be that big. So he could have had, I say he, I'll just say they, they could have had <laughs> some boundaries on the world and that would have allowed them to focus more on procedurally generating content for the world. Rather than, because it's not, it sounds like a small difference. Infinite versus finite, right? What's the big deal? But the big deal is when you have borders, you can work with something. You can work with those borders. You know when the world generation is going to stop. You know where everything is in the world, too. With infinite, you don't know where everything is because there's no end. How can you know where exactly where anything is in terms of, like, proportions, you know? Yeah. Other than by just sort of mathematically, like... Statistically, kind of, right? You can kind of say, well, we've put so many things in the world and we've tried to space them out so much and okay, whatever. But it's a hard job. And it's impossible to fully test because it's infinite. With a finite world, you know when you're filling up the glass. Because <laughs> you know how big the glass is. And I, I don't know, it just seems like everybody makes that mistake. I mean, they, this game is the same thing. They've made a universe that uh, cannot be fully explored and will never be. <laughs> so why make it? Why waste the, the effort to, to do that when you could maybe constrain it more and focus on having content that makes it worth exploring? I don't understand why that's not important to people. Or it doesn't seem to be important to people. Do you having think, a uh, reason to go there. Do you think Sorry. if you could actually see other players and stuff like that, that would make any difference too? Like, I feel like that's, a, that's another big thing is not actually having any kind of multiplayer. You're all yeah. exploring yeah. the same that's universe. That's a huge thing. <laughs> I would have liked... Journey style multiplayer. That would have been amazing in a game like this. Especially if the game had a little bit more that you could do. But did you ever play Journey? No, I watched Pause, I think, play. Beef. Beef. Is that the game in the desert, right? Sure. Am I thinking yeah. of that? The beginning okay. starts it starts in a kind of a deserty yeah. environment. Yeah. Yeah. But the the way the multiplayer worked in Journey was that you didn't control it. Someone was just plopped into your world uh, randomly at random times in the game and you just and you didn't have any direct means of communication you kind of had to do it through body language and movement and it was oh just it was an amazing experience I don't know why that was so interesting but it was to me it seemed to change the whole dynamic of playing with somebody you know because when you get into a fucking multiplayer game where everybody can talk and and everything, you know, all the shittiness of people comes out first and foremost, <laughs> you know? But in Journey, I think everybody felt kind of... My, I didn't even know it had multiplayer when I did it, so it was shocking to me. Oh, it's somebody just showed up in your AI? game. <laughs> this thing is really, like... The is best it, AI ever. Right, yeah, that's what it felt like. Because like, it was interacting with me, sort of. You know, I was moving, and it would move, kind of copy me and stuff. And I'm like, what is happening? Is this, is this a player? It feels like a player. So it might have been an even more... You know, mind-blowing experience for me. 
from that perspective, not knowing what was happening. But that would be awesome for this game, too. Like, No Man's Sky, just having someone inserted into your game. It's not necessarily that you have to, like, match up perfectly, because they keep they keep saying that, like, it's the universe is so big that you would... The likelihood of you ever even crossing with some other player is infinitesimally small, which... Jesus Christ, come on. I mean, that happened the first day on when they released on PlayStation. You saw that, right? Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, the first day, um, two people were streaming at the same time, and they were literally in the same place, and uh, and they and they realized it, so they tried to interact, and they, you know, that's when they realized they couldn't see each other, and um, then the game's creator responded with, wow, so many people play it. Like, I don't know, his response was very PR-oriented. Um, but I wonder how much Sony is, you know, in, in, in re you know, responsible for some of this, too. Like I, you know, I don't think he can easily be like, well, this, this, you know, this and this happened, because originally the game wasn't supposed to cost as much as it was, and it does and stuff, and then they kind of got picked <laughs> up by Sony, and um, things changed very quickly. Um, so I kind of wonder if if he's also not happy with with what is out there, and you know, he's probably sitting at home <laughs> yeah. with his six shooter like spinning the barrel kind of sad oh jeez oh god <laughs> uh, I mean there's certainly a factor there it, maybe that's what happened I don't know because it is hard to say like on the one hand I want to be like well they knew what was happening yeah right? I mean it seemed like they were still developing the game <laughs> themselves the only thing I could think of is just that they were in a situ they got themselves into a situation somehow where they were forced to release at a certain time and they knew that they shouldn't but couldn't do anything about it and haven't said anything about it. I think that's highly possible, honestly. Yeah. And like I said, I don't I have no animosity towards the developers at all. I just we have to separate that somewhat from the product they put out. You right. have to be able to criticize the product without people being like Roots. It's hard to make games. Leave the developers alone. Like, I'm not saying anything about the developers. And sure, it's hard, but they made their choices, and this is the result. I don't know. If, I feel bad because I, <laughs> I have a lot of developer friends on Twitter, and I say things sometimes, and they're like, you know this stuff is hard, right? I'm like, yeah, I do, but I have to say things. I have to... I can't just like stuff that I don't like just because it's hard. That doesn't apply to me. I don't get a free pass when I make something that people don't like. Right? Oh god. <laughs> Just thinking about... And lots of people like it too, so... It's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry everybody that I'm doing fucking nothing, but it's night time and I don't have shit. Yeah, just, just sit in the fucking dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I did find this, uh... This this police station, so at least gave me something to do through the night. I broke through a um, a gun safe with a stone axe, so that's been most of the night actually. <laughs> Went through like six stone axes just to get through there. I guess I could have done some of that, except for no, I don't have any. I didn't grab enough stones. That's what happened. Mm. So and then there were dogs all outside the hospital, so I couldn't go outside. So I'm just sitting here. I'm just sitting in this little shit shack <laughs> that I boarded up the windows to. Uh, I'm gonna come to you guys in the morning. I've I've looted this whole place now, so just waiting for it to to be. Just done. holding a candle. Holding it, just holding it, looking at. Yeah, it. just holding it in my hands. I'm telling spooky stories. When I um, I said this some similar stuff to this on Twitter. Uh. <laughs> I, I said basically that I think the only game that really uses procedural generation correctly is Dwarf Fortress. Which I didn't really say that correctly because then Bartwee was like, Terraria? Question mark? And I'm like, okay, I mean, uh, it. I mean, like, we're generating almost an entire game. That's not like what Terraria is. And I only bring that up because I see people talking about Terraria. Terraria doesn't generate a big world, even when you set it to, you know, large world order. It's a relatively small world, and it is finite like what I'm saying, but the content is not procedurally generated. The content is set in stone. 
you always have the same bosses. You always have the same enemies, and you always have the, mostly the same everything. The only thing that's procedurally generated, or so it seems, is the land. The land that you explore. Where the land appears, and how it's arranged, and how it looks. But compared to Dwarf Fortress, that's a whole different world of shit. That's like, Dwarf totally... Fortress like, was like lore and everything that gets generated. I've never actually played Dwarf Fortress, but it's my Yeah, it, it, it generates a finite world first, and then it goes through this uh, various other procedural generation steps where it generates a thousand years of lore. People live and die. Families are created. Legendary heroes are created. And legendary villains. And people of note. It generates a whole history for the world that you're about to go and play in. And then those things, the end result of that is the population of the world afterwards. You know? The cities and villages and things. They're named after people of the past. <laughs> that kind of stuff. It's pretty crazy. I don't think people understand the scale or importance of that. I think they... I think... I don't know. I, I think it's evidenced by the fact that there are no other games that really do that kind of stuff. And why we keep getting procedurally generated games that don't have enough game. <laughs> <laughs> wonder how they uh, went about that and why no one else has really kind of taken that and ran with it. Well, what I understand about Dwarf Fortress is that it's like a a labor of love of two brothers. Like one of them uh, was really into the lore, the story stuff, um, and I think the biggest contribution is the sort of uh, natural language generation stuff. I'm sure you've seen some aspects of that. I don't know anything about uh, the forces, so okay. I only well, know there, what there's a lot I've of, heard like, from you actually. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, there's a lot of really interesting stuff on that side, and I think the other brother is more like the, the technical side, like the generation of the world. Like, you may not realize this, but Dwarf Fortress has essentially a voxel world, like Minecraft, and it generates a more complicated world than Minecraft. <laughs> it's just that the interface to it is not wasn't it top down? easily digestible. Yeah. It's it's actually a text based interface. Oh, oh, that's right. I've seen pictures. Yes, 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 yes. But Man. people have rendered it out so you can see it like Minecraft. Random note about this game: I don't like that when I loot a zombie, it turns into a pile of parts. Oh, <laughs> well, you've missed out on the old gore blocks. That was they used to turn into a pile of blood and a pile of it, yeah. like so that they could get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. So I found God an damn apartment it. building. My leg is sprained. Oh. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> You're going through like the whole run of everything that is this game. I'm fighting these crawling zombies. I think Justin's going to die again. Yeah. Is it, it might happen. Yeah. It? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, been, yeah. No, it's four. It's been light up. Oh, my I bad. mean, why did I do that? I just did I wait? My torch I just death. looted moldy bread. Why would I even do that? I did I not realize if you, if you punch a, tor a torch, it explodes. Oh, does it? <laughs> I, I did it yeah, it's gone. Good to know. I'm going to put this moldy bread away and take this corn seed. I actually left my torch at, at, a, uh, at the place, so that's gone now forever. Because I'm not going back for it. <laughs> I just hope it's fucking safe enough outside to go out now. It is daytime at least, so like nothing's running anymore. Oh, stuff runs at night? Well, not nothing. There's the damn dog. Oh, yeah, things I thought it was night. just hard to see at night. No, oh, no, no. Well, I mean, yes. <laughs> but, it is hard to see, but shit also uh, is stronger and runs faster at night. It's you're, If you're caught outside at night, you're probably going to die. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm like lost inside this fucking hospital now. Need to go out and get some stones. Please, no dogs. <sighs> all this aloe and shit. Fucking dog. Shit. Make some, make some creme. De la creme. 
Mm -hmm. I gotta mm -hmm. find some cotton though. I ain't seen no cotton. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta make some bandages. All fucked yeah. up. There's a dog right up my ass right now. Howling and shit. <laughs> dog howling up your ass. <laughs> yeah, it's howling straight up my ass. <laughs> right up your ass. It's the worst sensation I've ever had. <laughs> you definitely don't want a dog howling up your butthole. No, that sounds terrible. It'd probably like kind of vibrate a little though. It'd be it'd be a very very interesting sensation, I imagine. Oh, fuck. God, I'm getting pretty I, close to you. I thought I just about lost the one dog, and then I run into another backyard. It's got another damn dog. Yo, uh, where, where's, uh, I don't know where to get bandages. Grass. Tie some grass together. You could tie grass together? Can well, you? I mean, I'm not I sure if that's I... literally. No, no. It's or is it wood? Do you it, no, wood he, he needs to pick cotton and make cloth. It's yeah. Cloth. cloth. I'm so sorry. Didn't it used to be grass, or am I crazy? I haven't seen I'm cotton for sure. days. You know, this game has some really shitty letters. I don't, I don't know why Minecraft is the only game. I, 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 in fact, I attribute the success of Minecraft to the fact that they are the only game that has worked out ladders. <laughs> uh, think about it. it. They work very well, and there's not very many games that you can say that about that have ladders. You can't be like, yeah, they're ladders. You climb them. You just go up them, and they work, and that's, that's what it is. I, I personally have never really had these ladder problems that people seem to have. You're a fucking liar. You're a fucking liar. I hate you. I'm not a liar. <laughs> I'm not a fucking liar. I have I know about like the goofy source ladders. Sometimes you fall off, sometimes you hurt the dirt, you know, whatever. But for the most part they were pretty good. But I think I've noticed though that certain people have lots of problems with ladders, and I think it might be a mental deficiency. <laughs> tested by games that are you that saying Coots, really know about? Coots one of those I just want I want someone <laughs> out there to find me the clip where Ko literally became the first man in Seven Days to Die to become a space astronaut <laughs> while climbing up a ladder, and then we then yeah, he can tell me happen, he's yeah. never had a problem with the ladder. I did not say never. <laughs> I want I, I, I I'm gonna go with okay. never. I found cotton. I thought you said you found God for a second there. <laughs> everything's everything's fine. I found God. Yo, so I remember you guys telling me feathers were really weird. Yeah, that was like as far as I got. What do you mean by really told weird? You feathers were weird? Yeah, I, and I thought you were trolling me when you were telling me how to get a feather. What are you talking about? I don't know. How do you get a feather in this game? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're really weird. You have to. No, um... shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know? Okay, fine. No, tell me. Okay, it's really weird, but you get them out of birds' nests. They're all over the ground. Oh, I think that might be what you're thinking of. The weird part is that the birds' nests are just scattered all over the ground. <laughs> that might be weird. It's I thought you were I thought I had to like chase a bear or something. <laughs> yeah, that's actually that's it. You need to chase a bear, and then uh, what you do is you you, you got to get some meat from something. You hold it out. And, um, <laughs> Did we? This sounds familiar now. Did we troll yeah, him? With yeah, this? you guys trolled me. You I don't. Oh, I don't remember that actually. But oh god, yeah, I remember something like that. <laughs> you rude pieces of shit! I was trying to learn this game. No wonder I never played it. Uh, oh, fantastic! I was trying to make a bow, and you had me fucking chasing bears or something. <laughs> 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 Why is this river fucking black? Is it oil? Is this an oil river? What is this? What are you talking about? I don't know. The river is not fucking water colored. <laughs> <laughs> like that. It's very dirty. It's very dirty. So you're, we're living in Rio. Well, tune. I mean, if you can't. I, I, I don't know, I feel like you're angry, but I, I gotta say, if you can't tell the difference between No Man's Sky and Seven Days to Die and Minecraft on your own, I don't know if I can help you. I don't understand because why they're everyone... they're obviously Sorry. different. <clears throat> no, it's fine, go ahead. I was gonna say I don't understand why everyone says this game is as, as ugly as they say it is. This game is not as ugly as people make it out to be. I understand the wasteland, I understand the repeated textures on the ground, um, but... Yeah, I don't. I in regard to anyone's not being able to tell the difference between those games, like that's like that's like saying that Fallout has the same level of building and world construction as Minecraft. Like Fallout, you know, is a completely different game. It has some crafting, but it's not the same game, and like it's not trying to be. 
But like that's what No Man's Sky is like. One of those the key differences is you you go around collecting very limited numbers of things, and you can't really mold the world in any way. You're just seeing more and more of whatever the world is generated. Right. I've made it into this town that you're in. Yeah. There's a lot of zombies in it. I am okay, I'm uh, about to cross to a run. cool bridge. Oh, I oh. had to run a lot. I'm getting real close to you, Kyle. I gotta run. I gotta run. Oh. <laughs> See, this is what happened to me.